Let's take a closer look at the exciting developments in the world of superconductors, particularly focusing on LK99. Recent groundbreaking research has reignited interest in LK99, a copper-substituted lead appetite. Contrary to previous uncertainties, the latest findings suggest that LK99 might display the Meissner effect at temperatures close to room temperature. This discovery has the potential to reshape our understanding of superconductors and could pave the way for significant technological advancements. Join us as we delve into how LK99 is pushing the limits of modern physics, sparking possibilities for future innovations. What exactly was LK99, and why did it stir up so much debate initially? The buzz centered on the early assertion that it could be a superconductor at room temperature. This notion sparked a combination of enthusiasm and doubt among scientists, given the significant consequences of such a breakthrough. Yet, efforts to duplicate the experiment brought about varying outcomes. Some researchers confirmed similar results, while others struggled to recreate the purported superconducting condition. The controversy surrounding LK99 largely arises from the fact that the initial information about it was shared on a preprint server, where papers haven't undergone peer review. This triggered numerous efforts to replicate the findings, some of which were even broadcasted on social media. However, subsequent evidence has emerged that contradicts the initial claims. Several research groups have conducted studies opposing the original assertions, suggesting that any observed superconducting properties might be attributed to impurities in the samples. Notably, the University of Maryland's Condensed Matter Theory Center stated that LK99 isn't a superconductor, even at room temperatures, describing it as a low-quality material with high resistance. Another research study highlighted a potential issue in the initial LK99 samples, specifically the presence of cupric sulfide, suggesting it could be a factor influencing certain observed characteristics. Despite these opposing views, some scientists advise against completely rejecting the initial claims. They argue that factors like impurities and adjustments to variables such as composition or firing time might uncover superconducting properties. However, the majority of experts agree that, until recently, LK99 was generally considered not to be a superconductor. This perspective changed with the publication of a recent paper. The study, titled Possible Meisner Effect Near Room Temperature in Copper Substituted Lead Appetite, investigates the properties of a copper substituted lead appetite known as LK99. In simpler terms, the researchers found that when LK99 is cooled below room temperature, it starts acting like a superconductor. When exposed to a 25 OE magnetic field, it pushes the field away, diamagnetic behavior. However, this changes to attracting the magnetic field, paramagnetic behavior, at 200 OE. The researchers also observed a unique memory effect during the cooling process. Importantly, they discovered hysteresis loops below 250 K, indicating the presence of the Meissner effect, a crucial characteristic of superconductivity in this material. The paper breaks down what qualifies a material as a superconductor, honing in on the Meissner effect perfect diamagnetism. They're eyeing LK99, a copper substituted lead appetite that could potentially be a room temperature superconductor. Previous studies missed the mark in proving this, but the paper spills the details on how they tweaked LK99 to iron out unwanted magnetic quirks and walks through the step-by-step -step experiments to check for superconducting properties. Now let's dig into the paper to see what went down in their experiments. After that, we'll take a look at what other researchers are saying about this research. The researchers were basically checking how this material reacts to magnets at different temperatures. They ran tests with light and medium strength magnetic fields ranging from 100 Kelvin to 300 Kelvin. Turns out under a light magnetic field, the material said, no thanks magnetic field, diamagnetism. But when the magnetic field got a bit stronger, the material was like, all right, you're not so bad, paramagnetism. This switch happened at a specific strength, giving them insights into how the material handles magnets. Simple as that. So they stumbled upon something cool at this chilly temperature of around 173 K, that's 100 Kelvin. The material actually remembered the magnetic field it encountered earlier. Kind of like a memory trick, you know. Then, at roughly 250K, it seemed to be gearing up for some superconducting action, where it conducts electricity like a champ. No resistance whatsoever. Now, when the researchers cranked up and then toned down the magnetic field strength, things got interesting. The material played it differently at higher temperatures compared to the lower ones. 
It threw in some curveballs, acting a bit irregular. Turns out it might be the material's internal structure holding onto memories of past magnetic fields. To peek into the material's inner world, they used this technique called X-ray diffraction. The structure mostly matched with something known as appetite, but there were a few tweaks, probably because of some impurities hanging around. So bottom line, this material seems to have some magnetic tricks up its sleeve, hinting at possible superconductivity up to a toasty 23 degrees C. But here's the catch. The magic they saw was a bit faint. They've got more homework to do, you know, to fine-tune the material and bring out these cool properties more clearly. And now, on to the Twitter talk about this discovery. Professor Robert Palgrave, an expert in inorganic and materials chemistry at UCL, has some reservations about a recent study discussing the creation and understanding of a material known as sulfoapatite. Here's his take in more straightforward terms. Doubts about the production method. Palgrave is questioning how they made this sulfoapatite. The process involves mixing phosphate and lead sulfide, but he's unsure about where the copper in the mixture came from. Concerns about the unusual cooking process. He's a bit skeptical about the cooking method they used, referred to as a hydrothermal method. This process, similar to high-pressure cooking, involves heating things up under pure oxygen at 500 degrees C. Palgrave is worried this might have turned the sulfide into sulfur dioxide, which is not ideal for making this kind of material. Evaluating the tools used for analysis, Palgrave is examining the tools used to study the material, particularly something called powder X-ray diffraction, XRD. While the patterns they found match expectations, he's concerned that the study lacks detailed information, like whether they subtracted background noise during their analysis. The missing pieces, what's actually in there? The main issue for Palgrave is the study doesn't delve into the composition of the material. While they make some educated guesses about sulfur being present based on XRD data, Palgrave believes more robust techniques should have been employed for a definite confirmation. In short, Palgrave isn't fully convinced about the success of creating the sulfo-apatite material due to issues with the study's synthesis approach and characterization. Christian Kyle, chief of staff at Astronis Space Technology, shares an update on LK99 Season 2. The researcher working on the potential room temperature superconductor has synthesized only a small amount of the material and acknowledges the limitations of their data. They're cautious, calling it potential evidence of superconductivity ruling out paramagnetism. The next step is to scale up the synthesis for more testing, using common methods like four-probe DC resistance measurement and scanning tunneling microscopy. What's on the horizon for LK99? The original researchers plan to present their findings on March 4th, 2024 at the APS March meeting. Despite the excitement about LK99's potential, addressing skepticism about synthesis, characterization and analysis is crucial. Ongoing research and testing will determine if LK99 is a valid and practical superconductor. The scientific community eagerly awaits the original researcher's presentation for more insights.